Hi, this is Dory Clark. We are here for another weekly installment of Newsweek's show, Better. We are here with Julia Pimsler. She is the author of the book, Go Big Now. And we're gonna be talking about the importance of how to master your mindset. Julia, it's so great to have you here. I'm so happy to be here, Dory. How's it going today? It's rocking and rolling. Things are great. And I'm especially excited to be talking with you about such an important concept uh, of mindset, because given the past year that all of us have had, I think mindset takes on a new importance. So in your new book, Go Big Now, you're talking about how we can really master our mindset so that we can do more. So I guess my, my first question how do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> How do you master your mindset? Well, first of all, what is mindset, right? It's a big buzzword that we hear people using a lot these days. We hear about having a resilient mindset, a growth mindset. You know, what does all that mean? So part of what I was looking to do and Go Big Now is give people really practical, actionable tips because I'm the least woo-woo mindset coach you'll ever meet, right? I come out of the business world. We've known each other you know, over six years now, and I teach people how to scale up their businesses. But I noticed very quickly that what most people needed help with first was mindset. And before the pandemic, mindset seemed like kind of a soft skill, like something, yeah, maybe I'll get to that after I figure out how to you know, raise venture capital. But now after the pandemic, I think everyone's realized that's the number one thing we all need to master. Because without a powerful mindset, you can't get through those tough times. You can't reinvent yourself. You can't figure out how to you know, quit your job and start your own company or say bye-bye to a job that didn't treat you well during the pandemic. And a lot of people are reinventing right now, as you know. Yeah, amen to that. Th thank you, Julia. And we have some excitement here. Uh, Kimberly said, yeah, need this conversation today. So Awesome, you're in the right place. Yeah, I think a lot of folks can relate. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Please feel free to type into the chat box and let us know where you're where you're calling in from. We have some great folks here. We have DT from Rochester. We have Minx from Oakland. We've got Jenny from New York and Karen from Boston and Robin from Queens. Uh, we've got all kinds of uh, great friends. And so we're so glad to have you here. And please feel free to type your questions for Julia into the chat box so we can go so we can go big on mindset. But Julia, something that that I'm curious about, um, you obviously started writing this book pre-pandemic. So why did this resonate for you? Why is mindset the thing that you decided you wanted to spend years of your life thinking about and talking about? Well, for me, changing my mindset was the biggest game changer for my career. I got to a place with my company, Little Pim, which was a language teaching company, where we were hitting about 400,000 in revenues. And in some ways, things were going great. You know, we're getting written up on all these lists of companies to watch and getting a lot of publicity. But the truth is, I felt like we were failing. We weren't making as much money as I wanted us to be making. I couldn't really support my family on what I was paying myself out of the company. And I didn't see the path to getting to a million and beyond. I didn't know how to go big. And it was so scary and frustrating. And I almost shut down the business because I just got you know, really overwhelmed with it. So that's when I had my first mindset shift where I realized that I had some big limiting beliefs about what I could be and what I could do, given that I had a creative background. I didn't go to business school. I don't have a finance degree. And I really thought I couldn't go raise capital. I couldn't run a multi-million dollar company. And these were all just mindset issues that once I got them cleared up, it was like this open highway. And I went and raised six million dollars and hired people away from Disney and turned Little Pim into a multi-million dollar company. So much like you with Reinventing You and Entrepreneurial You, two of my favorite books that I recommend all the time, is you know I wanted to solve the problems that I myself had faced. Like, why isn't anyone talking about this? and especially for women, which is a big part of who I work with now. Yeah, that's so important. Thank you, Julia. And to that end, Minx had a question for you. So let, let's say we're listening to this, we have bought in, we say, yes, Julia, I'm with you. I need to change my mindset. I need to level it up so I can do more things, so I can go big now. Where do you start? If you, if you feel like your mindset isn't quite in the right place that it needs to be, what should we do to begin to reorient the way that we think? Yes. Well, let's start by defining what the go big mindset is. So if you've heard about the growth mindset, that's a great foundation for the go big mindset. I sort of pick up where that leaves off. And the go big mindset is a set of beliefs that allows you to stay positive, overcome any obstacle and reach your goals. 
And it turns out all the successful people we all admire from Oprah to Richard Branson to Lady Gaga, I don't care, take any person you admire who's you know, achieved a modicum of success. They're all practicing mindset best practices that sometimes they share, sometimes they don't. So I really went on a journey to study who who is killing it out there and what mindset practices are they using and how can we bring them to people in a much more easy and accessible way. So in the book, I teach eight mindset practices. It's a bit like the seven habits of highly effective people. If you've ever read that by Stephen Covey, where he gives you, you know, seven practical tips. This is eight practical tips that you can do right away. So step one is define it, right? Do you want a go big mindset? Do you want to be able to stay positive, overcome obstacles and reach your goals? If that's a hell yes, then you can move on to step two, which is why don't I try to learn some of the things that successful people are doing? Because even if you've never studied mindset, you could probably figure out that if you want what those people have, you might have to think the same kind of thoughts they think. You can't just copy their actions. That doesn't work. We see people all the time who have a big goal and they're all excited and they set out to reach it and they work their tails off. You know, it's not about hustle and grit. I'm so tired of that story. I'm, I'm going to war on grit, Dory. I'm, I'm over grit. <laughs> grit is way it. Okay. overplayed. Yeah, no, I'm done with grit. Grit is, grit is out. What is in is having a go big mindset because you make different choices when you're thinking, how do I go big? Not how do I just work twice as hard as everybody else? So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is to make it a part of your daily life. Anyone who has studied mindset will tell you this is not once and done kind of stuff, right? I still do all these practices every single day. I start my morning with meditation. I do affirmations. I keep a gratitude journal. I have to do a practice called mind the gap, which is the first practice I teach in the book did one yesterday, you know, so these are tools that you can use right away and that will serve you the rest of your life. Really helpful. Thank you so much, Julia. And a great question came in from Karen Callahan. She wants to know, how do you maintain consistency with your mindset? She says, I do well for a while and then I fall <laughs> off the train, which I think probably a lot of us can relate to. How, how do you mentioned resiliency? How do you get back up? How do you retrain your mindset for that? Yes. Well, first of all, if you fall off of these great practices, you can always get back on. It's a bit like going to the gym. I know a lot of people took a break on working out during the pandemic because it's one of my mindset practices. I kept going to the gym and doing all that throughout the pandemic because that's one of the things that keeps me sane. But if you skip a few days, then you know you just go back to the gym. Building mindset core strength is a lot like building physical core strength. And for some reason, we all acknowledge that we need physical core strength and people you know, sign up for gym memberships and go running with their friends and do sit-ups and do all these things to build that core strength. But our mind is gonna be with us forever and it determines every single decision we make. So why aren't we investing just a little bit of time and energy into building mindset core strength by doing some of these practices, which by the way, are not hard and you get immediate results, unlike going to the gym, which I do, and I still feel like I still need to go more because I'm not seeing the results. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Really good points. And we want to say hi to some of the folks who are tuning in. If you are just joining us, please feel free to type into the chat box and let us know who you are and where you're calling in from. Veronica's here from New Jersey. Vicky from Berkshire, UK. Chaminda is here from Vancouver. I hope it is slightly less Amazing. hot now. Fingers crossed. Uh, we have a LinkedIn user from Cornwall, UK. Rebecca from Chicago. Uh, all kinds of, uh, of great friends joining us. Ludmilla's here from California and Christina from California. So uh, we're so glad to have you. Please type your your questions for Julia Pimsler into the chat box. We're here talking about mindset today. But Julia, and sorry, can I turn the table and ask you what's a mindset practice that you practice? I would love to hear one of yours. I just shared a couple of mine. Oh, look at look at you interlocking, <laughs> grabbing the microphone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bold and brassy. I like it. How about just one? <laughs> just one. Yeah. Well, in, ter in terms of in terms of mindset and my mindset practices, you know, I. I don't know, you can tell me because you know a lot more about mindset than I do. But I would say something that I that I have taken on as a conscious mindset. And um, I, I think in some I'll specifically state this one because I think it's a little controversial, uh, but I find it to be helpful. Uh, it is my mindset belief 
uh, I like to call it blame out, not in. Because I think that too many people, perhaps especially too many women, uh, tend whenever whenever there's something that goes wrong, whenever there's a criticism, uh, you know, especially the the you know amazing unsolicited feedback, people often say, "Oh no, oh no, I must be in the wrong. What did I do? How can I fix it?" And I think it is useful if you keep getting the same feedback, of course, to be thoughtful about it. But in general, if, especially if it's one off, especially if it's unsolicited, um, I personally think it's far more useful instead of saying, oh, gosh, what's wrong with me to instead say, what the F is wrong with you? Don't you tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love that. That's I love I that an addendum to go big now. That's like, that's like the ninth one now. Blame out. <laughs> that's right. And you know what? It, if it works for you, it's awesome. And it does fall under a, a larger mindset category, which is negative self-talk that most people engage in far too much negative self-talk. And that is one of the chapters in the book is about how to quiet down that talk because we can be our own biggest cheerleaders, but we can also be our worst saboteurs. And that's what we're trying to stop with these mindset practices, right? Is how do you make better choices about where your brain goes? I like to use the puppy analogy. I adopted a puppy at one point. I know we're both cat owners now. And funny enough, last time I talked to you, you, you know, we're talking about your cats. Now I've adopted two kittens. I'm trying to be just like you. <laughs> they're adorable. But they're, in the they're not going to make a showing. When you were on my show, your cat walked across the screen. But mine. Is oh, I mean, when we, when, we, when we started today, my cat was on the screen. Yes. Oh, was it? Yeah, mine are in the bedroom. So I don't think they're going to make a showing. But the point is, I had a dog at one point, And I remember when he was a puppy, I took him out for a walk. And he was running all over the place. Like he wanted to put his nose in the garbage, wrap himself around the lamppost, you know. So I had to kind of give a little tug on the leash. Like, no, we're not going to do that right now. You're not going to eat that crumpled up beer can. You know, a little tug on the leash. So we can learn to do that with our thoughts. Our thoughts will always run into the garbage. They just will, right? You know, well, what did I do wrong? Why don't they like me? Why didn't they return my email? And you can live that way if you want, but you could also learn these mindset practices that allow you to have different interpretations and go back to being your biggest cheerleader, not your biggest saboteur. Yeah, so so great. Thank you, Julia. And uh, Gina, our friend Gina Cox just chimed in. She says, I love building your mindset. Core strength is like building physical core strength. So that's a, a great metaphor that I think resonated with a lot of people. <laughs> yes. And we have a question come in from uh, Rajin. She wants to know, she says, hi from Colorado. We're so glad you're here. She says, Julia, what do you think of the phrase work smarter, not harder? You hear that all the time. Do you Do you believe in that or no? Well, yes, I do. I mean, we call it in my million dollar in my million dollar women community, we call it going from doer to leader because we find that when people start their businesses, they're so focused on, you know, doing, 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 multitasking, getting it all done. I don't have to hire anyone. I can do it all myself. Or even in the early phases of your career in corporate America, you want to prove that you can take on any task they throw at you. But as you move up the ranks in corporate America, or as you grow your business, you actually need a totally different set of skills. And you could call it working smarter, you could call it being a leader, but it's not the same set of skills that got you to launch your business and maybe get to 100 or 200,000, or in my case, as I shared earlier, 400,000 in revenues. I needed a mindset shift and a different set of skills and to be part of different communities that would pull me forward, you know, to make friends with people like Dory. I mean, we met when my first book came out and I was actively seeking out other people who were going big in the ways that I wanted to go big. And Dory, I've learned so much from you. And I told you when you came on my show, your email is always that one I open. You know, I skip every, a lot of them, but I always open yours because you give such incredible content. And, you know, thank you for all the ways you're helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses and go big. Well, thank you so much, Julia. We are here with Julia Pimsler. She's the author of the book, Go Big Now, and you can learn more about her and sign up for her email at juliapimsler.com. And if you want to make sure that you never miss one of our weekly episodes, we're on for Newsweek every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. You can actually sign up for the aforementioned Dory e-newsletter at doryclark.com, and you will never miss an episode. You will get reminders. Uh, so thank you for that. Julia. And we had some great comments come in. I love this one. Phyllis says, uh, she's here from New York. She says, I've had a gratitude habit for two years and yoga and exercise is non-negotiable, seven hours of sleep, eating healthy for many, many years. Amen to that, love Phyllis. It. Yes. Great. Nicely done. 
And, and you know, Dory, if folks want to find out where they're at on their mindset journey, if they're still not too sure, you know, do I have a go big mindset? I don't know. We have a free assessment they could take on my website, juliapimzer.com, and just look for the go big now tab. So that might be a fun place to start. Fantastic. Good tip. Thank you so much, Julia. And a question came in uh, that I think is really relevant from Karen. She says, do you have any advice for going the final mile in a midlife career shift interview process to keep imposter syndrome at bay? She says, I've got the fail harder thing down, but any other ideas? Oh, yes. Awesome. Well, so two big things can help with that. And, you know, I went out and raised venture capital. So talk about the final mile. I probably had 80 pitches and, you know, finally got to a couple of no's, uh, sorry, yeses that made all the difference, but there were a lot of no's along the way. So I think that's comparable. So two things you can do, and this is for anyone going through a challenging time right now, you can take a piece of paper and write at the top of it or in your journal, what could go right? Because often our brain really doesn't focus like that puppy going into the garbage, right? On how things could go right. And then just make a list. Well, I could get my dream job. I could look back at this as a time that I learned about so many other companies and what they're up to. Um, I could stay in contact with one of those interviewers and that could lead to a new partnership in my next job. All the things that could go right. Make that list. That'll help a lot. The second thing is, if you feel yourself veering into imposter syndrome, is to keep something on your phone in your notes. And I do this. I do all the things I teach called wins. And in wins, every time something good happens, you put it in there, copy and paste it from an email, a happy client, someone saying, wow, you made a difference in my life. Um, someone you, you know, did some work for who said this was above and beyond expectations because we tend to be a sieve for compliments and a bowl for criticism. Right. Someone says one thing to you they didn't like. You're going to be thinking about that for three years, whereas we get praise every day that we don't hold on to. So that's a mindset technique, too, is to find a way to keep that praise. I love that. I, I actually uh, do that as well. Speaking of mindset practices, I have oh, a, a there's another one you do. That's yes. great. I'm so happy to hear that. See, this is what I mean. All successful people are doing things like this. But, you know, I really resonated with what you did with Entrepreneurial You, Dory, where you're like, how is everybody making money? I got to go figure this out. And you interviewed all these people. I was on the same quest, but about mindset, right? What are all these mindset practices? I know what mine are. And then I went and learned from a lot of other amazing CEOs and leaders and entrepreneurs and even politicians and Olympic athletes. It's all in the book. I love it. I love it. Well, speaking, speaking, Julia, of, uh, of making a lot of money and having a million dollar business, you were the author of a book, your previous book called Million Dollar Women. And you have written extensively about how people, you know, women specifically, but people in general can build million dollar uh, businesses. And in fact, uh, you've talked about how there's a, there's a few key things that are necessary for building a million dollar business. Can, can you give us some hints here? How, how can yes. the, the people tuning in today uh, work on building their own million dollar practice? Well, here's the good news. If you have a short attention span, you only need three things to go big. And we'll define going big in this context as getting to a million in revenues because only two to 3% of women ever get to 1 million in revenues, fewer than 1% women of color. And for men, it's only 6%. So this is not an easy thing to get to a million, but you just need three things. You need the right mindset, you need the right skill set and you need the right network. Now, of course, there are multiple parts to each of those, but if on any given day you're feeling a bit lost or like, what do I do next? Maybe just check in with yourself and say, hmm, how's my mindset? Am I confident? Am I excited? Am I putting good energy toward this? Or am I being you know, a self-saboteur? Work on mindset if you need to. Do I have the right skills? That's the second one, skill set. Do I need to go take a course in Excel? Do I need to join an entrepreneurial program? Do If I want to write for Harvard Business Review, maybe I need to take Dory's class about becoming a recognized expert, right? Fill out those skills if you don't have them. And the third is the network. Are you part of networks that pull you forward? Harvard Business Review says we have three kinds of networks in our life, personal, operational, and strategic. And most people are very good on the personal, you know, friends and people they go out with. Operational is like, who can I call if I'm stuck on something? A lot of people have that good list in their phone too. But when it comes to strategic, sometimes people are not putting themselves into networks of people who can pull them forward. And that's where if you're feeling a little stuck, you might take a look at what organizations am I part of where I'm spending time with people who will help me go big because they're modeling it in their own lives right now. 
I think that's that's so interesting and really appropriate, Julia. I've been working with a few of my coaching clients this week, and this has come up repeatedly that there are so many you know smart, successful people, and they have gotten to where they are largely through force of will, but they have not really gotten comfortable at networking, or you know f- they still feel weird about it, like it's some uh, sleazy. Well, we thing all feel weird people. now, right? We have to relearn the whole thing. <laughs> we do. Yeah, right? I just went to my first two events and. The- last two weeks and it was like wait do we hug can we kiss can wait can i taste your drink if we're friends no we can we still do that (laughs) so now we all have to relearn it but you're right i mean i call it intentional networking because i find well everybody networks right i mean i have two children i used to go to you know the parent night right is that networking well it's not strategic networking right making friends with the other moms that's great for your personal network. And I was doing a lot of that. This is when I first thought about this. I'm sure you know the Jim Rohn quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I'm sure you quote that too. And when I had to stop and ask myself, okay, who do I spend the most time with? At the time, it was like my three and six-year-old kids, <laughs> right? Um, my ex-husband, who was also building a business, was not ahead of where I was. We were kind of at the same place. And not very many other people. So I joined Entrepreneurs Organization, which I wrote about in Million Dollar Women. And ultimately that inspired me to lead their program. I remember you came to visit us to help entrepreneurs get to 1 million. So for two years I did that and then launched Million Dollar Women to help women across the country get access to this business training. So you never know what'll happen if you go out of your comfort zone and and go spend time with people who are ahead of where you are. Yeah, such great advice. And Minx had a question, Julia. She wants to know, what is your top tip for enjoying the process of, of getting to where you want to go, getting getting to that go big destination as compared to just gritting your teeth and doing it? Well, I'm so glad you asked that. I am a big joie de vivre person. Um, I credit a lot of that to my mother who just, actually it's her birthday today. So happy birthday to my mom. Um, And she's someone who was always the first person to open a bottle of champagne and say, hey, let's celebrate, even if it's some tiny thing that nobody else is paying attention to. So joy is very important to me. And one book that really helped me with that, that I I recommend highly is called The The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. And this book encourages you to find the feelings behind your goals, because often we're pursuing a goal, you know, so hard and fast, but we don't even stop to think about, well, when I get there, am I going to have the feeling I want? Am I really going to feel satisfied? Am I going to feel energized? Or maybe that's not the feeling you're going for. Maybe the feeling you want is peaceful, relaxed. So she takes you through a series of exercises where you come up with your three core desired feelings. And then that becomes this wonderful filter to put through everything you do in life. Um, Our mutual friend, Anne, you know, Pellegrini was like, how do I know which talks to say yes to? So we came up with her filter and then it's like, well, I don't remember what her filter was, but my filter is joy, abundance, and community. So if I'm going to do an event that's going to be joyful, it's going to fulfill my desire for abundance, and it's going to get me into community, the three things I care about the most, it's a hell yes. If it's not going to be that fun, I've got to take five planes. I've got to miss out on time with my kids. That, that's not that joyful, right? Or if there's not going to be community there, I'm going to be in a room by myself because it's going to be filmed remotely. Not that much, you know, community. So these filters are amazing. And hopefully you'll check out the book and come up with your three CDFs. Yeah, that's that's really fantastic. I love it. And a great question came in from Carrie. She wants to know, Julia, do you have any advice for how to develop an advisory board with the right incentives that's committed to helping you go big? How can you enlist other people in this go big now process? What are what are your thoughts? Well, that has always been one of my strategies in going big. In fact, I've been asked before, you know, what do you wish you knew earlier? And I think it was how many people you can find who want to help you on the journey. Every company I've had from Little Pim to my film production company before that to Million Dollar Women Now has a robust board of advisors. And I actually have an article about this, a blog post on my website. I have 100 blogs about scaling up. So juliapimzer.com, go to blog. And one of them is three easy steps to building an advisory council. It actually has templates of what kind of email you should send to people. And I also wrote about this in Million Dollar Women. So go have a blast, build your advisory council, and you'll be surprised how many people would want to go on that journey with you. Uh, that sounds that sounds fantastic. And to that end, Anna had a question. She says, if you could travel back in time and give your younger self some advice, what would you say? Have you have you has your own thinking about mindset changed? Do you have mindset 
related advice perhaps, Julia? Oh, so much. I think it would have been to work on mindset earlier because I waited until I was sort of at that panicky state where I thought, wow, I've invested all of my money, all of my energy, all of my pride into this business, you know, Little Pim, my language teaching business, and it might fail. And that was terrifying. And I didn't know that a lot of that was being self-generated. I had as much chance as anyone and probably much more chance than some other people who didn't have access to the kind of privileges I had access to. You know, I went to, to Yale on scholarship. Um, I was exposed to the French National Film School where I got my graduate degree. Like I had so many resources around me. I sort of wasn't seeing because I was so caught up in this story of, well, I don't have a business background, right? How could I possibly figure this out? And now it sounds crazy because I'm on my second successful company. But at the time that was so real to me. And that's why I love what I do of helping other people break through their limiting beliefs, because often your limiting belief feels like a truth with a capital T, like, of course, I could never do this. But you start to work with a coach or a therapist or a mentor, and they help you see that, no, this is just a whole fabrication you have in your mind. Let's bust through it and get on with it so you can go big and have more fun and get more of what you want in life. Yes, absolutely. It's it's so true. I mean, I think for all of us, um, if we wanted to, we could probably find a litany of reasons why we can't do something. Uh, I mean, in, in my case, I don't have a business background either. And so for some people, it's easy to glom onto that and say, oh, well, you know, of course, you're, you wouldn't be taken seriously, or you're not qualified. Uh, but right. And you're published in Harvard Business Review, you've spoken to so many business audiences. I mean, you're one of the most highly respected and sought after speakers, you know, I've gotten to see you a few times. I always learn something new. So yeah, let's bust that belief right now for anybody watching. If you didn't go to business school, don't worry about it. In a way, it That's gives you great. an advantage, right? Because you don't think that you know. You know you need to learn some stuff where some people go to business school and they think they know, but they actually don't really teach you how to grow a business in business school. We've had a lot of people come to us for training who went to business school. Absolutely. You got to just ste steamroll through those uh, limiting self-beliefs. So I a great question came in from, from Gina. She's loving what you're saying, Julia, and she wants to know, Thank do you, you have tips for incorporating these ideas into corporate leadership development programs? She says, I think these ideas would work really well for the hybrid environment. Yes, well, first of all, they'll work for anyone, personal or professional. The only people that these go big tips are not for are people who are not trying to do anything big or ambitious. If you want to sit on your couch and eat potato chips, you do not need a go big mindset. Don't read this book. It's not for you. Don't worry about it. But if there's anything you want to do, even if it's, oh, I really want to propose to this person or I want to take a year off and travel around the world. You know, those are go big ideas that are going to take you out of your comfort zone. So these practices are really relevant for anyone, corporate America, entrepreneurs. I just taught some leaders uh, last week in a Go Big Mindset workshop, and they particularly loved the busting your limiting beliefs exercise. And they also really liked the be, do, have, which uh, maybe I'll just take a minute and explain that, Dory, if we have a moment. Can I explain one of the mindset tips? Please, yes. Great. This is one of my favorites. Uh, be, do, have is when you start with the question, who do I want to be in the world? And maybe you want to be the manager, right? Or maybe you want to be someone who people look up to and respect, or you want to be someone like Dory who helps other entrepreneurs succeed. Then you ask yourself, okay, what would that person be doing? That's the do of be, do, have. Maybe they'd be writing articles. Maybe they'd be teaching. Maybe they would be seeking out communities of other people like that. Then you start doing those things, even if it's just baby steps at first. The more you do those things, ultimately you will have the things that person would have. And while this seems kind of obvious, 99% of the planet is operating according to the opposite of that, which looks like this, have, do, be. Here's the amount of money I have or training I have or family support I have. Therefore, here's what I can do in the world, limited by that. And therefore, here's who I can be. And that stops so many people from pursuing their dreams or just going after that next big dream or goal because they say, I don't have the resources, I don't have the support, so I can't do the things. So this is a great one to teach your teams at work. And if you're interested in you know, a mindset workshop, feel free to reach out to me. 
awesome, Julia. Thank you so much. We are just about at time here, but I will mention that uh, we're here with Julia Pimsler. She's the author of the new book, Go Big Now. And you can learn more about her at juliapimsler.com. And you can make sure that you never miss one of our weekly Newsweek sessions by following me on LinkedIn. Go to doryclark.com slash LinkedIn. Hit the subscribe button underneath the picture and you will get weekly reminders about our conversations. Julia Pimsler, any closing words or advice about how we can begin to shift and to master our mindset? Yes, I think with this go big mindset that I'm teaching, it's really about understanding you have way more agency than you ever thought possible over your thoughts. That voice in your head is not you. It's an amalgam of all the things you learned. And if you don't like what it's saying, if it's not working for you, then pick up a copy of my book and read other mindset books. There are other great ones out there, but I just wanted to make it really easy to get going on that journey. And thanks so much for having me, Dora. It's been such fun. Wonderful. Julia, thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the conversation, hit the like and share button so your friends can benefit from it as well. We will see you next Thursday and take care.